Hello guys, welcome back to my channel where the makeup and sass keeps you coming back for more. It's Jilly and today I'm going to be bringing you guys a really super chatty video while I accomplish this bomb makeup look. Tell me I don't look good. Okay, baby. Um, we are out here looking fire. I'm gonna be talking to you guys about this new Gossip Girl series that just came out. I watched the first episode. I've got a lot of thoughts, a lot of things to say, and I just like really started rambling on and spilling the beans. So if you want to see all of that, then please keep on watching. But before we jump into today's video, don't forget to click that subscribe button down below if you haven't already just follow me for more fun things like this guys and then go ahead and follow me on instagram twitter and tiktok all of that is underscore it's jilly let's jump into today's video Hey guys, so um, just kind of like a preface for all of my super chatty talky videos. If I use a product and I like don't mention it, have no fear because I will have it all listed down below. So let's get started on today's conversation. I literally have so much to say. I'm super, super excited about our little chat today. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it. I'm just gonna like do my face, not really say much. Because, you know, it's all the same thing. I just wanted to try, like, a new fun eye. I've already done one eye so that we don't waste too much time during this video. So let's just get started on our conversation. So um, I recently watched the brand new Gossip Girl series that HBO just, like, came out with or whatever. And you guys, I have thoughts and I have feelings about this show. Um, just to like preface it all, if you guys didn't know, I am like a huge Gossip Girl fan. I have been watching Gossip Girl like since its inception, you know, like back in 2008, like Monday nights on CW, it was like sacred time for me. I literally loved Gossip Girl. I was such a Chuck and Blair fan. Um, through everything Chuck did, I was like, I'm going to stick by my man. That is my husband, okay? So needless to say, yeah, I was obviously like really obsessed with the show. And then when it ended, I was super sad. And I was just like, wow, that was the show of a lifetime. Like, we're never going to see something like this because it was just so like, you know, raw and just shameless, you know? And it's so funny because even though it was on CW, I still feel like a lot of people thought it was like overly like sexual or whatever. All of this crazy stuff, you know how people get all that hoopla. But for me, it was just such a good show. And I was watching the show, like, like I said, like literally I was in high school. So I guess I just aged myself quite a bit, but we won't talk about that. It was just literally such a good show. Loved so many things about it. And then I heard HBO was going to reboot the show and like do a whole series. And at first I was like, mm, I don't know about this HBO because we already did this show. We did it very well. Like I really liked what we had going on back in 29, 2009 or whatever. Um, so I, one of my sorority sisters texted me during the week and she said, did you watch the new um the new Gossip Girl and I said no because honestly it had slipped my mind like I really hadn't planned on watching this show because like I said I had such deep feelings for the initial show that I didn't want HBO to ruin my you know perception of the show with a new show or whatever and so this last night I finally decided um to jump into the show and you guys it it did not disappoint. Um, so from this point on, there will be spoilers. If you haven't seen the show or you're somebody who like gets affected by spoilers, please stop watching. Go watch the show. Come back because like I said, I've got lots of things to say about this show and where HBO is like taking the show and whatnot and how I feel about it as like an OG fan. How do I like actually feel about this show? Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, go out and say it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, I was glued to my couch watching this show. I was so like 
fascinated by the characters, by everything going on in it. It was crazy how good the show was. Like, guys, like, for real, for real, this is... It's only supposed to be a 10 episode series, but I have very high hopes for where they're going to take this show. Um, it was so, so good. So they are, I read an article on Harper's Bazaar about the show after I watched it last night because there were so many new characters. Um, it was kind of hard to wrap my mind around who all the new people are. So I wanted to, you know, just do a little bit of reading and whatnot. I'm, that type of weirdo. I like to read things. Um, but in case you guys were wondering, kind of like me, I thought this show was going to be like a remake of the original Gossip Girl with new people playing old characters. And I'm here to tell you that it's not. It's completely new characters set in like 13 years post the Serena Vanderwoodson, Chuck Bass, Blair Waldorf era. And they even like kind of bring them up. They talk about Nate Archibald. They talk about how Dan Humphrey ended up being Gossip Girl, um, all that stuff. Again, if you don't want to hear spoilers, please don't watch this because I've already dropped spoilers about the old show. If you haven't seen that, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help you. Ah! But yeah, so it's like all new characters, all new kids. And now Gossip Girl, like I won't spill the beans on who Gossip Girl is because they actually did something and they told us who she is this time around, which is different from last time. We waited all series long to find out Dodo Dumb Humph Dan Humphreys was Gossip Girl. Um, I hated Dan Humphreys, if you can't tell. Um, I hated him, Serena, eh, whatever. I won't go into like the old Gossip Girl. But the new one, so it's all new characters and it's so, so good. So I'm going to go through each character um, and just tell you guys what I think about them from the jump. Also, if you guys hear like background noise, I'm really sorry, but my dishwasher is really, really loud and... I thought it was done washing, but it's not. So here we are trying to film with this dishwasher in the background. So sorry about that. Um, but yeah, back to where we were. So I think the first character is going to be JC. Obviously, she's like the main character of the show. Um, I think the actress who plays her is Jordan Alexander. I don't know, the bald girl. She's the one who's bald. Um, she's like the mixed bald girl. She's super, super like pretty and apparently she's an influencer. Um, so her little minions, because she does have minions, I think their names are Monet and Luna. They are minions, just like Blair Waldorf had minions, they are minions. I will also try to compare the two shows to see like which character is most like an old character, but I actually found that this was pretty hard when I was thinking about it last night, because while I think some characters are similar to old characters, they're a little bit different in their own way. So I'll try to make comparisons, and if I think that they don't have a comparator, then I'll tell you guys, like, I don't think they have a comparator, you know, you know. So I think JC is kind of like the Blair Waldorf of the series, but like not really. I think she's more so the Blair Waldorf because she's like the girl that's running the show and then Serena Vanderwoodson like comes in and like tries to ruin it all and comes back to take Blair's spotlight. Alrighty, sorry y'all, I definitely lost my train of thought because I quickly realized that I don't know how to do liner and talk at the same time, but I will attempt to do, um, like my, my, you know, just liner this way. But yeah, so like I said, so I think that in the sense of being the it girl, um, JC, Okay, wow, sorry y'all, I did it again. But yeah, like I was saying, so JC is who I would think is more like Blair's counterpart in terms of being like the it girl, the one, you know, everyone's jealous of. She runs the show over at Constance Billard and whatnot. So that's where I would put her character. So we get introduced to JC and um, I guess her dad is some kind of like musician or something. He's never home. So, you know, you can already start figuring out all the mommy daddy issues that she's got and whatnot. Um, and then we end up finding out that her mom left her when she was a kid and like she has some half sister that she ended up manipulating the scholarship that her dad gives to the school to get the sister in because of course the sister's poor. 
Um, I mean, not poor, but you know, she's not filthy rich like these people are. So we're gonna say she's poor for the sake of the the show and what they're trying to you know present. But I think she she has really good intention towards the sister, and I think in the first episode she's not shown in a good light but I, I just think that that was just really misconstrued so far I do really like JC I do think that she needs to get her head out of her ass a little bit and I think she's very consumed by her entire social media like presence because she's like an influencer and her two little minions are always um you know filming her and showing her doing like all of this stuff for her stories so they kind of take it too far and the first episode really honestly ends in her and her sister becoming enemies which is really weird um or whatnot but it, it's happening so moving on to some other characters that are in her crew we've got this girl audrey which i who i like she gives me very like old timey like audrey hepburn vibe she's very like a clap her look is very classic um so to say and i i really like her but she's the one in the group that's like in a long-term relationship with this other kid called aki ok i don't know something he's got like pink hair i think he might be Asian or mixed with Asian and something else unsure but that is one thing about this series is that all of the characters are very much like diverse in some way they are queer characters um, and they're basically making the show to be very like modern um, and what like I guess the Gen Z's are experiencing right now I'm not a Gen Z obviously um, because they have really um even in the first part of the show they were talking about how oh my god like they got away with that kind of stuff like that was misogynistic all this stuff because they were reading the old gossip girl blog at the beginning so i think um like they're trying to kind of rectify the mistakes that were made in the last show because there were definitely some very creepy questionable moments and i think they're like trying to make up for that um but yeah so this girl audrey she's in a relationship with her boyfriend aki and i can already tell that she wants to basically hook up with the other guy in their friend group max and Max is the one who's a bit, I think he's bi, or he's exploratory. He, he doesn't discriminate when it comes to, like, sex or whatever. Um, and I think that Audrey really wants to hook up with him. And I kind of feel a little bit of Chuck and Blair vibes from the two of them. Because obviously Audrey is in this long-term relationship. Blair was in a relationship with um, Nate. And then she ended up cheating on him with chuck but in this case aki or ak or whatever his name is oh my god i can't say it i need to learn how to say it um he told audrey that it was okay if she thought about the friend while they were getting down and busy so you know more to come on that front i am very excited to see where they go i usually kind of like side character plots a little bit more than i like main character plots unless it's chuck and blair but we're not in that era are we um but yeah uh that is audrey so far so good with her i have very high hopes for her character i think we're gonna see a lot of character um development and like honestly trauma or like angst i don't know but i'm pretty excited to see where the show goes on that front um next person up is gonna be obi he is apparently the richest of the group and Okay, that lash decided it didn't want to cooperate with me, so if it looks funny, okay, please don't judge me. But yeah, so Obi is the richest one of the group from what the crew has said about him, and apparently he's the guiltiest. So he's like, suffers from being guilty rich, I don't know, something like that. They made a fun joke, it was cute. Um, so that's his spiel, and at the beginning he is jc's boyfriend and apparently they have been dating forever and they were a super cute couple but then later on throughout the episode it's revealed that he has been frustrated with her but since she became a influencer and all of that stuff so the show really does do a good job of being like 
in the times modern. I think they even make some allusions to coronavirus um, and like the COVID pandemic. Like, I don't know. Uh, obviously, the characters in the show aren't wearing any masks because apparently I think it's like post COVID or something. But they definitely kind of make some allusions towards it. And they are trying their very best to be um, very aware of the times with uh, the way they are presenting information in the show. And another thing I read about the show is that the creators and the people working on the show are really trying to make it be a space where like kids can learn about some of these new like topics that we're learning about like you know non-binary like kind of stuff like that they're trying to teach the kids things as well they don't just want them to come here and look at you know privilege porn is kind of what i think they said in the in the article that i was reading because that's kind of what the first show was like right it was just like like just obscene amount of wealth from kids who just were beyond control their parents didn't know what they were doing they were out to all hours of the time and i think they said in this show they are trying to show the kids kind of wrestling and grappling with their with their wealth and kind of thinking like is it right that i have like this much money and like other people don't and that's kind of something i'm really excited to see where they end up taking the show i will say the whoever wrote the the, the score for the show um excuse me you need like to get a bonus because like all of the music just really went with the show like really made it better like i'm telling y'all the show is just very well produced, very well directed. It's thebomb.com. I really don't know what else to say um, in terms of how they made the show, produced it, all that stuff. Like, it's it's amazing. The fashion is really good. At first, I definitely saw pictures of the uniforms and I was like, what's going on? But then when you watch the show, it actually like fits in better with like current fashion trends and all of that stuff. Like I'm really telling you guys, like if you haven't figured it out, you really need to go watch the show. So let's continue on with our character um, discussion. Cause I think that's what the main, the first episode was really about was introducing those characters um, so that we could see what we were in for. Um, so that was Obi. He's like one of those protester types. He kind of reminds me of like a mix of Vanessa and Dan, but they're, but he's rich and feels very guilty about it. And I think this is like a total Vanessa and Dan move to try to like, you know, be part of protest and whatnot if they had been like super filthy rich, like their uh, friends were, but that's just me. Um, so the next people in the group we're gonna discuss are gonna be the minions. Um, and they really are minions. So I'm gonna call them minions. Uh, they are literally like the minions Blair had, what were their name? Penelope and something else. I always remember Penelope's name and I don't remember the other girl's name. Yikes. Um, but they're exactly like the two of them and their names are Monet and Luna, I believe. And again, very diverse like people. They're not just like little white girls because, oh, and I think one of Blair's minions was Isabella, something like that, because it was the, the token black girl of the entire show. Um, because one of JC's minions, Monet, is like a black girl and she has like braids, which is really like refreshing to see on camera. So, you know, like, I feel like no one ever really has braids on camera. I just love seeing braids on camera. That's like my thing. Um, and then Luna is like, I don't know, Middle East, like, no, she's not Middle Eastern. Maybe she's Hispanic. I don't know. She's, I don't know. You can't tell what she really is but she's really cute she's really pretty i actually really like luna's fashion sense um i feel like that's kind of the fashion sense that i would have if i had millions of dollars um at my disposal <laughs> but i digress obviously let me not cry um but yeah so i really like luna's whole vibe um i love her style but they are definitely jc's minions more to come on them. They didn't really shed a lot of like insight on their personal lives yet, but usually we get to see Minion's personal lives a little bit later on um, throughout the show. Since this is supposed to only be 10 episodes, I'm sure we'll see more of them very soon, um, but they were the ones to cause a little bit of drama between JC and her sister, who is the next character I'll talk about. So her sister is Zoya. And Zoya is kind of, to me, a mix of Jenny Humphreys and Serena Vanderwoodson. 
because so she's really pretty she comes in so that's kind of what I mean is like you can't put these characters to one old character sadly but she comes in and she's supposed to be uh, JC's sister. JC's getting her all of these like nice things undercover. The backstory is like her dad and JC's dad hate each other because they obviously love the same woman, you know, all that hoopla or whatever. So the, the girls aren't supposed to be friends, like they're not supposed to know each other. But the gag is they've been friends for uh, quite some time and like online, um, they've been talking and chatting and DMing and all that stuff. So that's kind of like an ongoing plot at this point point uh Zoya's dad does end up finding out that she knew JC before all of this and that's why she made them move to New York um or whatever and then he started questioning her scholarship and she like at that moment I kind of felt like a little bit of privilege was coming out in her which she was like well I would have gotten it anyways right um but so far I don't know how I feel about Zoya yet like, I like her. She's not, like, problematic or anything, but I'm not obsessed with her. She didn't really stick out. Like, the character, the actress did a great job, but, like, the character itself did not really, you know, wow and amaze me yet. So that's why I'm just like, oh, whatever. Like, she's cute. Um, she played her part very well, so I'm not too pressed by her or anything like that. So the other unremarkable character to me was probably Aki, um, or Ak. So sorry that I'm butchering this man's name. Um, he was pretty chill. He is the character that out of the friend group, like he doesn't drink. And that was like another thing. So they went out with Zoya for the first time and then they were watching her take a sip of her drink. And then her sister's like, you know, you don't have to drink if you don't want to. Like, we're not going to peer pressure you. And I kind of thought that was like a good little, you know, plug in by the show characters for the teenagers to realize that they don't have to say yes to everything and you know it's okay to say no and Aki was like there he was like yeah like I don't drink do you want like an orange fizz or something because that's what I'm having and you know they kind of all moved on from that point and I thought that was a little bit refreshing um definitely a big change from the last show because the last show maybe if you weren't drinking you weren't going to be part of the crew I mean, honestly, they would have forced her to do so many other things because that last show was... They, they had these kids wild in. Okay? Um, no wonder moms were upset. I, clearly, my mom wasn't upset because I was watching this show all the time. But I'm Haitian and she didn't know what I was watching. But whatever. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's kind of like what happened. Um, so, Aki. Sorry, I totally just trained my... I lost my train of thought there. So, Aki, he... Yeah, I, I think there's more to come with him. And I want to read more of his backstory, of course. But for the first, like, episode, the only thing that happened that was really, like, eh, was that he told his girlfriend he, she could think about another man while they were having sex. That's really all that I've got on Aki, you know? And then the next character I think I have left is Max. So Max is the one who I think comes from like I think his his parents are two gay men I, I think I missed that part in the beginning I can't remember what his ordeal is but he definitely has Lucy goosey parents that's what I'll say I think he does have Lucy goosey parents and they're kind of okay with him expressing himself so he's the one in the group for now that was shown to be bi and then I think Aki might low-key be bi, but he don't know he is yet, or he's going to explore the options of being with a man, and I think the man is going to be Max. So far, Max reminds me the most of Chuck Bass, um, just because he is kind of wild, he's a little sex fiend, he likes drugs, and... Yeah, the drugs part doesn't go away, they just don't, they just apparently like don't force you to take drugs, so, you know, so there's that. Alrighty y'all, so um, let's just wrap up today's video. Um, this is going to be the final look of the day. Mm -hmm. Super, super obsessed with this look. Let me zoom out so y'all can really see like the full effect, you know? So yeah, um, those were really all of my thoughts and opinions on the brand new Gossip Girl show. I know that I rambled on quite a bit, but I was just like super, super excited about the show. I had so many things to get off my chest, so we're going to wrap it all up because if not, we're going to be here forever. 
Um, honestly, my final thoughts and opinions on the show are I'm super excited to see where this goes. I really like how the show creators, all of the people involved, are taking the effort into like incorporating like diversity of all kinds into the show, whether it be racial diversity, sexual diversity, all of that stuff. And they're kind of like also trying to make it a learning moment for the viewers of this show, especially because they know these shows can be super influential. And I think that was one of the major critiques of the first series was that it's a super influential show and you guys aren't really kind of recognizing that or trying to make any effort to fix that any of that so I think that this time around they're really trying their best I really like these characters I'm super excited to see what happens with them like y'all like I'm just overall just excited for where this show is going and I think it's gonna be a really good 10 episodes it's only episode one and I'm over here raving about it so yeah take it from an you know a gossip girl lover obsessor the new series is definitely worth your time go ahead and give it a try I mean if you're like older and you're like I don't want to watch this because it's for kids I mean sure but I still think it's like you know it still has like that adult component that you can definitely still vibe with but yeah guys that's gonna be all for today's video I really hope you guys enjoyed this super chit chatty video if you like these topics if you like me talking about these shows and movies that I get really passionate about I'm a total nerd please let me know down below leave a comment down below but um, that's really gonna be all for me today don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there you know you want to and then follow me on Instagram Twitter and TikTok. all of that is underscore it's Jilly and I'll see you guys next time thank you so much for watching